that they put together a government of 550 members of parliament with five vice presidents because they believe that that is what is going to bring about cohesion. As I speak to you, there is war in Eastern Congo, which is ethnically prevalent. Last night only there were grenade attacks in Bujumbura, in Burundi, in the entire Sahelian region, in Mali. Two days ago there was a coup d'etat in Mauritania, in Chad, in Burkina Faso, in Cameroon. That is Africa for you. So when we talk about cohesion, we ought to be very careful. In this country, we have had clashes. In 1992, they were referred to as political clashes. In 1997, we had similar clashes. In the year 2007, we had clashes. And in then, it is through the effort of the international community that Kenya did not get degenerate into civil war. And when indeed Kofi Annan and Grasa Marshall were here, they said that there are four things that Kenya ought to have done. One of course was to immediately ensure that there was ceasefire at that time. We lost over 1,500 people there and there are people who are still displaced. We then said that we needed a new constitution and we had the constitution of Kenya 2010 and uh, President Kibaki, but it had started a little earlier and I was very intimately involved in it in nine, the year 2001. Then we said that we would deal with the question of land, truth, justice and reconciliation, which have never been implemented. You remember that both the current president of the Republic of Kenya and the deputy president were indicted National Criminal Court. That is how close this country has come to breaking apart. In the year 2017, you will remember there was a dispute about the election, and you will remember that at that time there was a threat, complete with maps, to divide Kenya into two so that some individuals from the Western part would control that part and President Kenyatta and others would control. This is how serious the question of cohesion has been in this country. And my fear sometimes is that we don't take it very seriously as a country, particularly the political class. And this is what Koigi talks about in his book. That as a country, we are engaged in pretense. But that pretense threatens the very being of the country. The creation of the Commission of National Cohesion is in itself indicative of the fact that we are thoroughly divided in society. And you only have to listen to the political leaders. In fact, it's wrong to call them leaders. <laughs> they are misleaders. <laughs> they don't lead anybody anywhere. They just misguide the nation. You've got to listen to them. Don't listen to them when they are in podium, such as this. Listen to them at funerals when they are speaking their mother tongue. Listen to them when they are in their local vernacular radio station, what they say. Listen to them even in matters that ought to be national. Recently, we had the interviews for those who are to be appointed as the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya and a member of the Supreme Court. And the entire enterprise was an ethnic enterprise complete with the chairman of the Judicial Service Commission asking every candidate, where do you come from? In other words, she was trying to determine their ethnicity. And yet we are looking for the chief justice.
Justice of the Republic of Kenya. When as a lawyer I appear before a judge, do I care whether the judge is Kamba Kikuyu, man or woman? I simply want an individual who has read the law and will determine the case on the basis of the law and the facts. But we ask one of the candidates who was then appointed as a member of the Supreme Court told the very assembly on that day of the interview. Kenya is definitely trial. Even this tribunal is trial. That is the nation that we are talking about. That is the nation where even in the creation of universities, including this one, is informed by ethnicity. <laughs> and even when you want to choose a vice chancellor here, the people here will want somebody from here, and when that somebody is not from here, they ground up. I want you to look at the universities across the country, the public universities, all of them, almost all of them. If you don't get a vice chancellor from that area, the people, the politicians say, this is our university. Can you believe it? That is the country that we are talking about. And I can give examples of in, in the University of Elderly, in Masinda Municipal University, where vice chancellors have been threatened because they did not come from that area. And Kisi University. That is what we are talking about. When you hire Kenyans, you are told they do not come from that area. Yet you have the thing called national cohesion and integration. <laughs> And it's not only in the education sector, it is in every sector. In health sector, in the security sector, in appointment of government officials, everything in this country has degenerated into ethnicity. Koigo Amari says, because the political misleaders have convinced their people and hypnotized them like the python does that our being and survival demands that the other ethnicities are not taken care of. So that it is in this conflict that they try. Recently, I'm going to give examples. My good friend J.D. Muturi, who is the Speaker of the National Assembly of Kenya, is anointed as a leader of Mount Kenya. In the 21st century, in the 21st century, the Speaker of the National Assembly is so anointed that we are not angry at the Chairman of the National Commission does not complain about now, President Kenyatta will be traveling to a rural Kenyatta. And the culmination of the celebration of our 58 years will be in Nyanza, in Kisumu. It is being pre presented as a new affair. It is a new affair, not a national affair. Yet Nyanza has Korea, has Kisi, has Maragoli, has Suba, has all these ethnicities. Yet a national event is being project projected as a new affair. You only have to read the social media to see what is happening. Because well, that is the reality. And yet when we come to podia such as this, and as long as we pretend we apply band aid solutions to what is a cancerous problem. You know, a year ago, a young man who is my mentee, a young man who is a doctor, 
was employed at the head of the medical service in Siaya County, which is my original county apart from Nairobi. He was hounded out of office, a doctor, on the ground that he is a duo but from Migori. As I speak now, he's the head of the medical service in Migori, having been hounded out of Shire because he is a duo but from Migori. That is how low we are descended. Yeah. 